Welcome to another episode. This is another round of SAT practice. And in all of these six questions, we're going to solve for a specific variable. So looking at number one, which of the following gives you Y in terms of X? If that confuses you, you just have to look at the answer choices and it will reveal what letter you are solving for. So this one's easy. We're just trying to get Y by itself. And I think it's just two steps. So if you want Y by itself, don't touch the letter Y and you want to get rid of that 2x first. That's a positive 2x, so you just get rid of it by subtracting by 2x. That's gonna leave you with 3y equals 18 minus 2x. So if these are not like terms, all you gotta do is put them side to side just like that. The last step to get rid of this three that's being multiplied to that y, all you gotta do is divide by three. The three is cancel off, you're left with y. 18 divided by 3 is 6, and negative 2 over 3, you can't simplify, so that is just negative 2 over 3x. Look at your answer choices, make sure you look at this negative sign in the middle so you don't pick the wrong one, and that will be letter B. Moving on. Similar question, solve for W, and you can tell right away by just looking at the answer choices. Get rid of the 2L first, the one that's not even by the W, by subtracting 2L, just like that. If these two are not like terms, then just write them side by side, just like this, equals 2W. Last move, divide by two, and I suggest that you split them up like that. So this one's just a little different because you're solving the other way around, but you can write it this way still. W equals P over two. Look at it this way. You see P over two, right? There is only one with P over two in here. So it kind of gives you a clue on how to work a little faster. That's the one I'm looking at. And then where does the L come from? Well, two divided by two is one. So that's just gonna cancel off right here. And you're left with an L answer choice C. Moving on to a little harder one, a little harder one, because if you look at this question, the A's are split up. When the terms are split up like this, you are allowed to put parentheses at the bottom. It doesn't change anything, and you wanna get rid of that bracket first. A is being divided by this whole bracket down here, A plus B. So let's get rid of that fraction first by multiplying by both of those terms in parentheses like this. So you're allowed to do that as long as you put both of those terms at the bottom and that's gonna cancel off. So at least we don't have fractions anymore. We can distribute this before we rewrite it. So A times C is just AC. B times C is BC equals A. My A's are separated in both sides and I want them all in one side. So you might as well move it to the right because your A terms are already there. But you can't just subtract an A right here. These are still connected. You gotta subtract AC, just like that. So that's gonna cancel off. I'm left with BC equals A minus a c and if this a does not have a coefficient it has a one if they both have an a and they are not like terms this is called factoring kind of like reverse distributive property you can write an a on the outside and leave the leftovers in the parentheses my leftover terms are one minus c and since that bracket is being multiplied to a you can get rid of it by dividing both sides by one minus C. So your answer is A. Keep factoring in mind, we're gonna use that again for another problem up here. Number four, this one's not that bad. Answer choices tell me that I gotta solve for B, so I don't even have to read it once again. Get rid of the fraction first, multiply both sides by three. That's gonna cancel off your denominator. I'm left with A, B minus one equals three C. Add a one to both sides, you're left with AB equals 3C plus one. And then the last move is to divide by A. You can also divide by A like this, because that's the version that shows up on the answer choices. So that would be letter A. This one's similar to question number three. If you look at your formula in the beginning, your G's are split up, and that is the letter that we're trying to solve for. So you wanna gather up all your G's on one side. I can get rid of that F by adding an F and try to do two things at the same time. 
I can subtract a G over here. These are going to cancel off and these are going to cancel off. In the SAT, they usually always put terms in alphabetical order. Now I got G H minus G equals A B C D E F. I have to say it in my head. F goes before H and your G's are separated on the left. So do what we did in question number three. If they have those in common, you can take it outside and leave the leftovers in the inside. So don't forget that this has a one if it doesn't have a coefficient. So that's gonna be H minus one equals F minus H. That H minus one is being multiplied to your G. So to get rid of it, the final move is just to divide by H minus one. That's gonna cancel off. Look at your answer choices. Hopefully it shows up there and I gotta look for it. Oh, here it is, D. That is your answer. These all have K's, so that's the letter that we're solving for. The first letter I want to get rid of is this A. Subtracting an A, that's not too bad. I got N minus A equals K minus one times D. Distribute the D to the terms in the inside. D K minus one D. Add one D to both sides. You get N minus A plus one D. And the very last move, divide by D on both sides. Answer D. Guarantee this will show up once or twice on the SAT. Hopefully it helped. If it did, throw a like, a subscribe, and I will see you on the next episode. Peace.